the passive. For more information on the passive, look in your textbook on page 258 and read chart 10-1, and on page 259, read chart 10-2. First, let's talk about typical sentences in English. A normal sentence in English looks like this. The cat chased the mouse. We have a subject, a verb, and an object. The cat is the subject. It does the action, the verb. The mouse, which is the object, does nothing. The mouse is completely passive. It has no action. It is the cat that has the action. The cat does the chasing. Other examples of sentences like this in English. I like Ashley's class. The subject is I, the verb is like, and the object is Ashley's class. Ashley's class does nothing. I do something. I like her class. But Ashley's class does nothing. John has seen that movie twice. John is the subject, has seen is the verb, that movie is the object. That movie does nothing. It is John who does something. John sees the movie. The movie doesn't do anything. Now let's talk about active versus passive sentences. First, active sentences are like the sentences I showed you before. All of these sentences are active sentences. Subject does the verb to the object. So we have the cat chased the mouse. A passive sentence would be like this. The mouse was chased by the cat. So in a, in a passive sentence, we change things a little bit. The object becomes the subject, and the subject becomes the object. The meaning is the same. There is no difference in meaning between these two sentences. We've just changed the order of the words. When we change the order of the words, though, we have a few other things that we have to change. So first what we do is we switch the subject and the object. We put the object at the beginning of the sentence and the subject at the end of the sentence. Then we change the verb. What we do with the verb is we take a form of the verb be plus the past participle. Okay, so if you look at our example here, the verb is chased. What tense is that? That's simple past. So what is the simple past of be? Well, it's was, right? So we take a form of the verb be, was, plus the past participle of the verb chase, which is chased. Be plus past participle is was chased. Then we add a by phrase. What is a by phrase? That's when we add the preposition by in front of the subject. So we say by the cat. The mouse was chased by the cat. So that's how we change an active sentence to a passive sentence. Now you may be asking, why? Why do we use the passive? The cat chased the mouse is a good sentence. Why do we need to say the mouse was chased by the cat? What's the point? There are two reasons that we use the passive. First, we use the passive when we don't know the subject of the sentence. Sometimes we don't know who did the action. When that's the case, we need to use passive. For instance, a man was killed on Tuesday. Who killed the man? I don't know. Maybe it was his wife. Maybe it was his brother. Maybe it was a crazy person who came into his apartment and killed him. I don't know. We don't have that information. So we have to use the passive. Because the man didn't do anything. But someone did. Someone killed him. So we use the passive. 
Another reason we use the passive is that the subject is not as important as the object. So we know who did the action, but that's not what's important. What's important is who received the action. So we're talking about this man who's dead, someone killed him, and we say the man was found by his neighbor. Now the neighbor did it. We could say his neighbor found the man. We could say that, but we don't care about the neighbor. The neighbor's not important. This is a murder. It's a crime. The police are investigating. They care about the man. They want to find out who killed the man. The neighbor is not important. The man is important. So we make him the subject, and we make the neighbor the object. Other important notes about the passive. First thing, passive confuses a lot of students, but it is not confusing, I promise. It is important to remember that passive is not a verb tense. It is absolutely not a verb tense. A lot of students think that passive and past are the same thing. They are not. You can have passive sentences in the present. You can have passive sentences in the future. Passive does not mean past. If you want to show tense, so if you want to show when an action happened, then you change the form of the verb be. You remember, to make a sentence passive, we need a form of the verb be plus the past participle plus the by phrase. So when we want to show tense, we change be. The past participle doesn't change. We change the form of the verb be. So if the tense is in the past, then we would use was or were, because that's the past of be. If the action happens in the future, then we would use will be, because that's the future of be. Always use the past participle. The past participle does not always mean that the action occurred in the past. Yes, it's true that we use the past participle with tenses like present perfect and past perfect, which show past actions, but we use the past participle a lot in English for many different things. It doesn't always mean that the action occurred in the past. So you always use the past participle with the passive. Even if the passive is in the present, doesn't matter. Always use the past participle. And finally, the by phrase is optional. For instance, in this sentence, a man was killed on Tuesday. We don't know who killed him, so we can't say a man was killed by his wife because we don't know if his wife killed him. A man was killed by his best friend. We don't know. Maybe it was his best friend. Maybe not. So we can't use the by phrase there. So we don't. You don't always have to have the by phrase. You have to have a form of the verb be and the past participle. No choice there. Must have a form of the verb be. Must have the past participle. The by phrase, sometimes you need it. Sometimes you don't. Let's look at some examples of passive with different tenses. In the simple present, the active sentence is, Jack builds houses. The passive sentence is, houses are built by Jack. So we take the subject and the object and we change them. Then we take the verb and we change it. So how do we change the verb? A form of the verb be, are, plus the past participle, built. And we add a by phrase, so we write by Jack. Simple past, Jack built the house. In the passive, it's the house was built by Jack. So we take the subject and the object and we change them, and then we change the verb. A form of the verb be, plus the past participle, was built, and we add by. If you look at each of these, you will see 
every passive sentence has built and by Jack. Okay? Always built, always by Jack. It's the form of the verb be that changes. Okay? So when it's present, we use are. When it's simple past, we use was. When it's present progressive, we use is being. When it's past progressive, we use was being. When it's present perfect, we use has been. And when it's future, we use will be. So be changes depending on the tense. Built never changes. The past participle stays the same, no matter what. Okay, now it's your turn. Change these sentences from active to passive. Let's look at the answers. Ashley teaches many students. Ashley is the subject. Many students is the object. So we change them. We move many students to the front of the sentence. We move Ashley to the end of the sentence and we put the preposition by in front of it. And then we change the verb. Teaches is simple present. So simple present for be is are plus the past participle, which is taught, are taught. The doctor saw two patients yesterday. Two patients were seen by the doctor yesterday. Two patients is the object, so we move it to the front of the sentence. We move the doctor to the end of the sentence, and we put by in front of it, and then we change the verb. Saw is simple past, so we take the simple past form of be, which is were, plus the past participle of the verb see, which is seen. Were seen. Jessica has written a letter becomes a letter has been written by Jessica. We take a letter and move it to the front of the sentence. Jessica goes to the end of the sentence with the preposition by in front of it. And then we change has written. Has written is present perfect. The present perfect form of the verb be is has been. The past participle of write is written. So has been written. And finally, the children are eating pizza becomes Pizza is being eaten by the children. We take pizza and move it to the front of the sentence. The children goes to the end of the sentence, and we put the preposition by in front of it, and then we change the verb. Our eating is present progressive. So we take our eating, and we use the present progressive form of the verb be, is being, plus the past participle of the verb eat, which is eaten, and it becomes is being eaten. If we go back here for a minute and look at this chart, students always find this confusing, but the easiest way to learn the passive is to memorize it. If you study this chart and you memorize it so that you always know simple present are, simple past was, present progressive is being, Past progressive was being, present perfect has been, future will be. If you do that, if you just memorize it, then you will always get the answers right. On any quiz I give you, any test, you will always write a good passive sentence. You just have to memorize this chart. That's important. For more practice, turn in your book and do exercise 2 on page 259 
exercise 5 on page 261, and most importantly, exercise 6 on page 262.